started. Aster, Aster from Norway, Sweden. Cool. Starts with G or B three. <laughs> um, don't know what that is. B three. Okay, I'm just gonna play. Oh, playing blindingly fast too. I'm just gonna play some kind of normal setup. I play the e pawn forward before moving the knight out, so I can take back with the queen. Here, I'll put the bishop there. And uh, castle. So he's giving me lots of space in the center. I can play with um, c5, and I think I will. He's got the double fianchetto. I can get both my knights to an active square. Knights to active squares, and I can counter the fianchetto towards his king. And then he can play for, um, <clears throat> yeah, opening up with e4. Four. So, logical way to play. So what happens when I take? I'm probably going to take because I don't want especially for him to push his pawn forward. And if I push the pawn forward, he could take the d-pawn. It might not be so bad, although my queen is then in the way of the, uh, the bishop. So let's take first. And then play. Ah, he can just take the pawn. Bishop and knight are enough to uh, allow him to just take that pawn. Hmm. Okay, so let's get my queen to the side here. I guess when he pushes the pawn forward, my knight is going to go to um, d5. And um, yeah, I can't take it. So let's see what his plan is from here. At some point he has to, uh, I think, uh, slow down and start thinking. Maybe he never needs to think. He's one of these people who can play instant moves all the time. So I want to play rip to d8 here, putting it opposite his queen. Is there any, uh, any problem with that? Also, uh, an extra piece on the d6 square in case he's thinking of hopping his knight in there. Okay, at this point he decides to think. It's his queen over there. How about if I kick the knight, force it to decide where it's going? It can't go over here, it can't go over here. I think it has to go back. It could go there. I can defend the pawn. It could go here or here. Yeah, in all those cases, I can defend the pawn by playing a6. Oh, he really just wants to go there, okay. So I guess he wins the b-pawn. Or not, let's see. Keeps taking stuff. Let's take here. The queen comes in, I can play... Um... Oh, that was the idea, to take with the bishop. Okay, so does this win the exchange? I wonder if there's some trick on this diagonal. I guess I can't move the knight with a great tempo. Like queen here and knight here hitting his queen. He takes my queen, I take his queen with check. Takes the, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't amount to anything. Let's see. If I go knight there now or knight here now, he just takes it. So it just loses a piece. So it's better to lose the exchange than lose a piece. So what's the what's the best way to do this? Yeah, my B pawn is still hanging. That's kind of annoying. Okay, we'll start by defending the b-pawn. I guess, I don't know if he can pile up on the rook and maybe try and win a whole piece there instead of just winning the exchange. But, uh, well, he didn't spend very long looking for anything better. So what have I got? I've got a pawn for the exchange. Uh, let's see, I don't have 
the bishop pair or anything clever like that. Just a bishop and a knight. Okay, let's drop back and defend defend my bishop so my knight is free to move. Now I can play knight to um, knight c3. That would be a fork. Get the exchange back and stay a pawn up. So he stepped away from that. And um, okay, he's also got my bishop in a bit of a bind there. So uh, let's drop back. He was repinning my knight. But now I've unpinned it because since the bishop is defended by the rook, uh, queen, he can w trade the queen for rook and bishop, but uh, it's usually not a great trade. So once again, uh, knight c3 is not a threat because he has queen takes. Knight somewhere else, knight to b4, hitting c2, and a2. Knight here, he's got queen takes knight. Well, I'll see if he comes up with anything. Okay, that move. He plays c4. So I have knight b4. Any other way to hit something? Some valuable target. I don't see it. Knight c4, the queen moves, I take the bishop, the king takes, and then I take the pawn. So where does the queen go? The queen probably goes back here to defend the pawn. Knight here, queen here. I have something in that position. So if not, I guess I would rather have the knight over on this side of the board, maybe get something against his king. And uh, let's see, rooks, mm, maybe. Check. Lift my queen up to uh, protect the b-pawn. Do it with tempo. Ah, so maybe thinks he can just trade into a, uh, a winning endgame. We'll see. I want to get uh, one of my <laughs> pawns in front of the king forward, just so my king has a little space there. It's a little dangerous on the back rank at the moment. So, pawn to... Um, on to C4 first. Let's see, so that square is a forking square if I get my knight there, but that takes three moves. Okay, so he's going to um, try and pile up on that pawn, but I'm going to try and push the pawn one step forward and defend it with the knight. So that if he wants to win that pawn, he will have to um, give up the exchange. Give the exchange back. And that knight's very stable there. <laughs> he, can't, uh, he can't really do anything about it unless I walk into some silly pin or other tactic like that. Let's see, so I can play like h6 and then rook to a8, pile up on the a pawn. Oh, well, that's nice. Okay, so let's start with h6. Then let's go rook to a8. Threatening, threatening his pawn. Oh, 
Okay, I can keep I can keep piling up on that pawn. Queen c5. Also looking at um, f2 there, although uh, he's got that defended. He's got f2 defended. Hmm, is he going to try and uh, run with that? Yeah, it's not going not going too far. If he puts the rip behind it, maybe I'll just blockade. Oh, he does that. So, I'll just take that pawn then. Now I'm hitting his rook on c2. He needs to defend it, or drop back, or finally give up the exchange here. So he defended the rook. Okay, so now the forking square is here. <laughs> the knight here is also kind of interesting. Let's start with queen here. Threatening, threatening knight to um, knight b4. Yeah, there's also a fork of the uh, king and queen from this square, but uh, I just have to pin that pawn first. So if I place my queen somewhere over here, like g6, then that's a fork. That would be cool. Okay, didn't do anything about knight to b4. So I guess I should play that. What else have I got here, really? Knight b4, probably the rook goes straight back. Then pawn to c2. Looks good to me. There's no check on my king. And my knight is defended. He could try and pin the knight, but I can take the, his rook with my queen. So, all the way to c2. Now, if I play queen to b1, does that... Uh, win. No, no, I have to play knight to uh, knight there, and that would be a bit tricky, because he can take the pawn then. Yeah, so he keeps the queen there. Let's see, he does have a check now. Um... So, let's see, what do I want to do? I've got uh, some ideas here. I think um, maybe queen here to uh, keep an eye on the pawn. And uh, some of these squares here where I might deliver a check. He comes in here and gives this check. He can attack this pawn, I guess. That's the problem. But if my queen is here and he checks and I run away with the king, where is the next check? The next check is there, and that's covered. And if he attacks this pawn, I can push it forward, and this pawn is defended. That's a point of staying on this diagonal. I could have gone with the check and just gone for a trade. That's an interesting idea. Trade queens and just play with the knight and two pawns against the rook. So queen here, check. Queen takes, pawn takes, and then he moves his king over. I play up. He moves his king over. And I play up, and he moves his king there, and he's got me blockaded. So it looks like that. So that would just be a draw, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe even if he could liberate his rook, it might even give him some winning chances. So I probably have to play for more than that. I would like to play for more than that.
So now I just need to try and drive his pieces to awkward squares. <laughs> so, you know, queen here, check. Queen here, get my queen to that square. While the knight's still here defending the pawn. That would be ideal. And prevent his queen from defending. Somehow, but there's got to be, uh, I don't know, I'll have to find some trick with the knight. Let's see, yeah, he goes there. Okay, so he gets away from the forks. Hmm, okay, what next? Is there a way to drive the queen away from that square? Or maybe I need to really bring the king up. Mm, okay, we'll start by moving some pawns forward. Maybe that will help. Queen's still defending the e pawn. There's this check. The king can run here. Yeah, if I could lure the king to the f2 square, then this knight to um, knight here would be check. That would be uh, knight to what's that? D3 would be check, picking up the rook. That would be an ideal scenario. And another idea is to bring my pawn all the way to e4 and play queen to um, this square. He takes the knight though. That would not work. That would not work so well. Maybe I get both these pawns forward and, and play. Get all these pawns forward. Get my pawns to um, like f4 and d e3 try and chase his pieces away drive his pieces away from the key defensive squares here okay so he still he always has this check let's step up one off the back rank Maybe go all the way to g6 and then play f5. Hmm, that actually would open up the king to a check on the 6th rank here. Hmm. So f5 here. There's no check. I don't see how I can exploit that. Now how about if I play f4? He takes, I take. Comes in here. Oh yeah, so he's looking at the f-pawn. Um, but now he's abandoned the... Um, he has abandoned the, his attack on the C pawn. So if I defend here, I can play something like knight a2 to hit his rook while defending the C pawn. Yeah, so he comes running back. Okay, so pawn to f4, pawn takes, oh, he attacks the queen there, that's interesting. So, right, I left my post. But I can play here, 
He hasn't got time to take anything. He's got to run back and defend this from being, from queening. Oh, actually he didn't, but he couldn't leave the back rank, so that's a point. So I can take or I can push forward. Let's push forward here. I know, this is tricky. If I push and push, I can get my queen to this square. He can take the knight. I can take here with check and mate. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I want to play. I want to play queen to... Uh, ah, so now he's given up the um, the um, pawn, the attack on the pawn. So I can play a knight move that um, attacks the rook. Like knight here. He can take this pawn, he can take this pawn, I can take his rook. He can take this pawn, I take his rook. Or I can play queen to um, e2, queen e2. I think the knight move is better. Knight here. Hitting his rook. I think this wins material. And now, even if he's got both his pieces on the back rank, I still am uh, pushing that pawn forward. And look at that. He's getting low on time. Resigned. He resigned. Okay, cool. I, got, I won one. Well, that was a nice comeback. I will upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.